The end of the US dollar. We've been hearing it for 50 years, but could the moment finally be here? Could the US dollar be poised to lose its global reserve status and slip even further in value as massive money printing leads to crushing monetary debasement? Well, the competition has never been higher for the dollar. From the Chinese Yuan to Bitcoin and beyond, alternatives are being sought by people around the world. De-dollarization, by the way, is defined as the replacement of the US dollar by other currencies as the global reserve currency, and it's a process which is already underway, even though it's just in its beginning stages. It's also worth remembering that no fiat has ever stood the test of time. The dollar, considering their rampant inflation and massive debts, probably not going to be an exception. But if all of that is true, then what's the play here? What should we do as investors? Well, that's what I want to discuss in this video. But first, why do people say that de-dollarization is here? Before I answer that, I want to be clear. The dollar is still king. It is still the indispensable reserve currency of the world. The question that we have to ask, for how much longer is that going to be true? Because today, yes, it is true. The dollar is the king, baby. But in five years time, well, things could start looking pretty gosh darn different. So far in 2023, we've had a lot of interesting news stories, let's say. We've had a few dozen different announcements about increased trade, for example, the Chinese Yuan in international trade. China, for example, is now settling more trade internationally in the Chinese Yuan than in the US dollar. Countries all over the world, from Brazil to Argentina to Pakistan, the UAE to Russia and more, they're getting on the Yuan train, baby. China's economy is set to overtake the USA as soon as 2028. The BRICS group, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, is even discussing launching their own currency as a currency to be used as a settlement currency for trade bloc members. And we have 19 more countries looking to join the BRICS group, including the world's biggest oil and food and manufacturing producers. I think it would be folly to simply dismiss the idea of de-dollarization outright or some kind of conspiracy, as for example, Dave Ramsey called it recently. Remember, the only thing that gives the dollar or really any fiat money its value is the belief in its value. And that is being questioned right now by the international community. The USA is $32 trillion in debt. That's a debt which only gets worse. In fact, the debt is so bad that now the interest payments are the number one line item on the US budget. The currency is being debased at an incredible rate right now. Another $8 trillion could be printed just for the banking crisis alone. Now add in that the dollar, of course, has been used as a weapon too many times against too many countries in the world, and they're starting to get a bit tired of it, right? These countries are sick of the USA dictating terms to them. They want to be more independent. Remember, no currency has ever lasted as a reserve currency forever. The average lifespan, in fact, of a reserve currency is 94 years. The dollar has been around as the global reserve currency for 99 years now. Tick tock, tick tock. So if it is not a conspiracy theory that the de-dollarization trend is here, if the global trends of money, the global trends of demographics, the global trends of political power are indeed moving away from Washington and thus the dollar, then how can investors prepare. Well, before we discuss that, I want to let you know about my weekly crypto newsletter. It's called Wealth Mastery. And look, every single issue is jam-packed full of money-making alpha. My team and I spend about 40 hours every single week, so you can have a quick 10-minute read of the key things happening in altcoins, airdrops, NFTs, DeFi, charts, and much more. Join our 68,000 weekly readers by signing up for free using the link down below. So if your money isn't safe sitting in dollars anymore, where can you put your money? Well, let's discuss the first option, which is other dirty, dirty fiat money. Top contenders, probably the Euro and the Chinese Yuan. Honestly, I'm not super excited about either one of those options. They both have different issues, let's say. I suppose at least China, China is trying to make their currency into a global reserve currency, the Europeans. I don't think Washington is going to allow them to do that. Uncle Sam will get a bit angry if they do. Jokes aside though, all fiat currencies do suffer the same problem. Money printing, central banks, debasement, all that craziness. For me, I don't store vast amounts of my wealth in cash. I put it into other assets. Now I currently only hold actually US dollars and New Zealand dollars. I don't hold really 
any substantial amount of euros. I don't hold any yuan at all. Now let's talk about gold and silver. I like both of them. They're the OG currency hedge, right? And well, gold just hit a new all-time high recently. Apparently other people uh, are worried about the future of the dollar and of course all this money printing insanity that's going on. We're also seeing central banks outside of the USA. They have been stacking gold like mad in recent months, getting rid of dollars, buying gold. Look, the thing with metals, you just can't expect too much from them. And if you are gonna get into metals, you need to actually hold real metals, not paper metals. Keep that in mind. If you're gonna buy metals, then you need to self custody if you can, or if you really want to diversify away from the US dollar and even the USA, if you live in the USA, then gold sitting in a vault in a place like Singapore, that becomes a pretty damn interesting option, right? It's pretty low cost too, just keeping that money, the gold, the silver, sitting in a vault somewhere safe, just in case, right? And what about stocks in the time of de-dollarization? Well, US stocks could be a bit of a mixed bag. You see, de-dollarization doesn't necessarily mean that the US economy is going to completely implode and everything's gonna be terrible. But questions, of course, should be asked about America's ability to repay its massive $32 trillion debt. And of course, how much money is going to need to be printed Right? And how much money can it even print if it loses its dominant status as a reserve currency, even if that's eroded by 20%. Now for me, stocks, my exposure is mostly in New Zealand and Australia, mining, banking, telecom, energy providers, as well as uh, real estate investment trusts. More on that in a second. I do have some US stocks, but I'm not buying any more US stocks. And I'll probably reduce my exposure to that over time. I would also like to expand a bit of exposure to other markets more Asian markets, for example, but so far I have not done that in a significant way. So what about real estate? Look, people always need somewhere to live, regardless of what the fiat currency markets are doing in your country, the global reserve currency. Property has remained a pretty solid investment class over time. It's made a lot of people very, very rich. And in times of economic uncertainty, good deals can probably be found by the savvy investors. I don't currently own any investment properties directly, but I'm open to the idea. Something I've been thinking about for a while. You probably mentioned a few times we've been around here for a bit because cash producing assets, always a decent idea, right? Even though properties management can be a pain in the butt and all that stuff. But, but one property related investment that I do personally own is that real estate investment trusts or REITs. Now these are traded like stocks and basically give you exposure to different property sectors or even different property sectors in different countries. For example, you can have residential properties in Australia or medical properties in New Zealand, right? And of course, in this conversation, we have to talk about Bitcoin. Look, how is Bitcoin going to fare during a time of de-dollarization? It's yet to be determined. We hope it's of course gonna do well. In many ways, this is what Bitcoin was made for. More and more, I see Bitcoin adoption growing. We're seeing the number of users go up. We're seeing the number of use cases go up. We're seeing the number of serious players paying attention to Bitcoin going up. We're seeing more and more people getting involved in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's growing all the time. Bitcoin's personally my biggest holding. Yeah, I know, Bitcoin's volatile, it's a bit crazy. But it's also highly liquid, it's highly portable. It can be moved anywhere on earth in minutes with no restrictions. It is the ultimate plan B currency to be holding. It is a Swiss bank in my pocket. It's not owned by or controlled by any nation state. So in a time when one nation state currency is in trouble and others rising, I'm gonna trust math and the internet nerds, man. I like it. And of course, no conversation on de-dollarization would be complete without actually talking about actually escaping the dollar's domain. Particularly for those of you who still live in the USA, right? The, the US dollar, it's losing its reserve status. And if it goes further down, things get messy with $32 trillion in debt, right? Interest payments on that debt, they are becoming America's number one line item on the budget, meaning that, you know, education, schools, roads, all that kind of stuff, not so important because you got to pay the debt, not the principal, just the interest on the debt, right? This all gives you the potential for social unrest, social chaos, real possibilities. And I do not wish that, of course, upon anyone anywhere, but think logically here. Prepare yourself for the worst case scenario. What if, right? Just in case, you might want to consider getting a second passport. Now, there's two good ways to do this. One's by descent. So if you have grandparents from Ireland, Spain, Italy, the UK, a few other countries out there, then chances are you're probably going to be able to claim a passport, which is huge. Get it if you can. Have that second option just in case. Look into it. And if that's not an option for you, then you can always actually buy a passport in many countries. Now look, it costs a bit of money, right? But the easiest and cheapest ones can be had in the Caribbean, places like St. Lucia. They cost only like $100,000. 
But for those of you with bigger net worths, maybe a place like Malta or Turkey, they also offer similar kind of programs, but they're much more expensive. So that's something to consider. Because don't think just in terms of assets here. What's my money going to do? Think in terms of freedom. Think in terms of options. Think of where you're going to have the best kind of life. Now, all that being said, I don't think the US dollar is going to go into hyperinflation overnight, as some have speculated. It's probably going to take years. But the coming years, that process, if it does happen, if these macro trends start playing out in that direction, even more than they already have been, could be rough. So get ready. Let me know what you think about all this down below. Are we heading towards de-dollarization? Is it real or is it all a bit of a nothing burger? Curious to hear your thoughts. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.